Oh I'm... my god. <laughs> oh wait, there we go. Recording has worked. Hello and welcome to the unofficial untitled Pokemon podcast episode four, I think. I don't know because it's been a while since I last recorded a one. Uh, we are down my co-host and we have gained a new uh, guest. Um, would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Hi, I am Whaleborn, or <laughs> I have a lot of aliases online, but Whaleborn is how I normally go now. Oh, I uh, am a Pokemon nerd, <laughs> through and through. Nice. And then as well, uh, my first question that I'm pretty much going to be doing to every single guest I invite, um, what got you into Pokemon? Uh, honestly, my sister did, because she was playing, I think it was Sapphire, uh, on her Game Boy, and I just, I just immediately fell for it, basically. Like, I was like six years old when I first played Pokemon. And I think I played Red, because um, my sister didn't want me playing Sapphire. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it was hers. <laughs> but no, but I had Red, and Red was great. So, and then I went, um, my first actual game, like, I, I would say actual game, but like the first game that I had that I beat fully was uh, Platinum. Yep, that's a um, very good title. Yeah, no, good title to start with. Also had my f has my favorite Pokemon of all time, which is Giratina. Good shit. I agree. Sick, sick Pokemon, sick everything. Um, but yeah, no, that's basically how it was, and then from there, it just kind of never really stopped. I mean, I'll I will say, like, my my. <laughs> My obsession has gone down a little bit, but, like, that's just natural, right? You know? It, it happens. Yeah, but, like, I still I still love it overall. It's still great. Yeah. that that That's a very good introduction to um your first time getting into Pokemon. Yeah, mine was just uh, Pokemon Stadium and then the TCG. Oh, yeah. I was given the entire base set of the original... Uh, Wizards of the Coast TCG, and I no longer have them, and I feel yeah. really sad. <laughs> and they're all in like a really awesome binder. That was like a Pokedex. Oh shit, that's cool. Yeah, and now it's gone, so that's really sad. Yeah, I, can, I can swear on this, by the way, right? I I will allow it. Okay. <laughs> I will I will allow well, swearing. I ruined it already. I mean, first, first episode I, mean, I it... did. <laughs> I was about to say, like, surely it's already, like, been ruined, essentially. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> ruined on the first episode at about 20 minutes in, when, yeah, um, <laughs> Tony, he was like, fuck Rillaboom, and I was, I was like, oi, I was like, no, what do you mean? And I was like, we don't say fuck or cunt here, and then, yeah. I feel that, like That was the entirety fine. of that. It's fine. But yeah, at this point... Pokemon I'm too lazy to um, edit with uh, Premiere, so we're gonna just leave uh, it at that for now. So we're just gonna have it like this. But yeah. like, look, I completely mean, like, uncensored. People, who... <laughs> people, people who watch Pokemon content, especially like podcasts and shit, they're, they're not, they're not like you know, they're not kids. If you are a child watching this or listening to this, I should say, um, whatever you just heard, um, ignore. Yeah, ignore those uh, words. Uh, those words, you wait until you're about 10 years old, then you can say them. Because yeah. that's when I was using them very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so a trailer dropped a few days ago, which showed us a new Zoroa and Zoroark forms. Yes. And it's... they are actually really cool looking. I really like their design. I mean... They're okay. Look, okay, the reason I don't... What I don't get is why they're normal ghost type. Because <laughs> that's apparently what they're typing is. I think yeah. it was on the website or something. They can, they, it's really been confirmed. It really puts me off. I really thought they were going to be Fire Fairy. Because yeah. Because of the color scheme, but like... I don't know, I feel like it would make a bit more sense. Since Zoro, Zorok and... How are you bloody pronounce it, I can't remember. But, like, <laughs> Zoro and Zorok are, like, they have fire moves in them, like, like you can teach them 
to yeah. like flamethrower and stuff like that. So it wouldn't be a stretch for them to kind of move into fire and possibly fairy, especially considering their design is very, I guess, a very fable like. Mm. But dude, that Zorok though, like, holy, that's it, cool. It looks so so good. The question is, what do you think the shiny form is? Oh man, that that's a good one. I don't that, know. That's the real question. I'm hoping for um, black main body with. Actually, no, that's a lie. I don't think that will be where it goes. Uh, it might be something like because I want purple in it somewhere. Okay. I don't know why, but I really do. Maybe the tints be like a purple color. Yeah, the tints will be purple, but I can't really think of like the base color. Maybe like a dark blue sort of thing, like somewhere on that, like the lower, like the yeah. dark side of blue. I don't know what kind of blue, but because if it if it's just black, then the problem is it's literally just shiny Zoro, it, <laughs> like the normal it, form, yeah, it, <laughs> because it's the same. Yeah, pretty much they just go back to um the original form, which mm. you know I feel like it's kind of uncreative, just like they did for um the Galarian uh birds, how they're just. Their shiny forms are just their regular fo Cantonian forms. Yeah, yeah. I always thought shiny, uh, like regular shiny Zoroark and all that should have had, um, the red should have been replaced with white. And then like, um, and then like kind of the, I guess like the darker parts of the, the coat. Cause like they have like the light gray and then the dark kind of like almost black. I guess, like, the black part should have been, like, purple, maybe? Like, I don't know. Maybe that's too intricate for shiny design, but, like, you well, know. Well, they, uh, they make them now, so they don't use, like, an inversion or uh, no, yeah, color coding anymore, so... Like, yeah, they don't just <laughs> put it, get the paint bucket tool and... <laughs> yeah, and they just go, click, done, perfect sprite. <laughs> Blanc, there it is. But yeah, so that was, like, the introduction that I wanted to... Uh, add in which mm. yeah uh makes me really keen for the game and see other uh hisuian forms that we'll get in the future yeah also close facebook because don't want uh, notifications uh so our official first topic of the podcast will be the uh pokemon soundtrack whether it be oh. the original tracks or remixes which um funny enough this uh man here uh, introduced me to a really cool um uh recreation slash uh cover artist for Pokemon, which is uh Luigi Gigas. Mm. This guy is criminally underrated. He is currently I'm not sure if he's still doing it. I think he might have finished it now. But he was doing a bachelor of um of uh production, like like music production or something like that. Okay. So he, that like basically the YouTube stuff was on the side, but like his stuff is hilariously good, and it gets basically no attention except like years later when it gets recommended randomly to people. So some of his videos have like <laughs> like at least like a million, I think. Like the highest ones have a million roughly. Uh nearly if I, if I check 972k most popular and that's the 972k which is the Arceus, Arceus battle theme one he did what I like about his remixes though is not only are they orchestral which is I'm a sucker for that sort of thing do the same <laughs> but yeah but like the other thing too he also puts his own stuff in there like he doesn't just make the song but like with different instruments he like puts his own melodies in there and has the main part as well, which is the thing with the Arceus one, which is the thing with, like, um, uh, the X and Y legendary battle theme. Like, all of this stuff. Like, he even makes custom ones. Like, he made a Reggie Gigas one, of course he yeah. did. Reggie but he Gigas, made, he, he did a Heat Train one very recently. He did a Darkrai one. He did a Mewtwo one. Like, this guy, like, he doesn't upload often. He doesn't. He uploads... Sometimes he'll upload, like, multiple within a month or so, but then, like, he'll take a really long break between. Um, but his stuff is so good every time. Like, it's so good. 
Um, but for some perspective, the the last time he uploaded, uh, not recently, but like separate from the recent stuff, was a year ago. So within the last month or two, he's uploaded four videos. <laughs> but probably we're gonna see another like year long break. But I am totally fine with that. Yeah, as especially the uh, stuff that he brings out is just really, really good. So yeah. And yeah, we all no, know just, is he, never rush art. Yes. But he doesn't just do um you know, the the obvious like landmark themes. He also does like the root themes and like the SSN he did one of. Um so like he does other stuff too, but like generally he like he does like the, you know, oh well here's the legendary theme for this and all that, which is fair enough, you know. Especially yeah. considering how slowly um he uploads, but yeah, no, it's all very good. Yeah, anyway. it's finally uh, good to have, like, um some Pokemon having their own unique um themes other than, you know, just having, like, the basic one for, like, five legendaries, like, in Diamond and Pearl. But, I mean, it's... That track was fine. I didn't really mind it. Yeah. I swear to God. I'm getting cold right now. Can I, uh... I'm just going to mute really quick. This yeah, is sure the thing. Worst timing ever. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go for, like, original soundtracks for Generation. I'm going to go with Generation 3, as I play that one the most. And Generation 4 is a close second, I would say. This would definitely be my, uh, recommended, um, Generations to, uh, like, well, those are like my go-to uh, generations to listen back on. Whether it be like uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire for the like re remakes, remasters, like uh, even like the new ones like uh, Zinnia's theme, which I didn't really mind. But I think my favorite generation three track was the Deoxys one, especially with how difficult it was to like. Well, not really difficult well how uh long ago you had to been able to participate in that event i think it was like 15 years ago or something along those lines it was a while ago no not 15 years it'd be like 17 years i think they came out around about 2004 if i'm not mistaken got a double check uh I'm pretty sure it was Sapphire. It was 2004, 2003. Okay. Oh, 2002. Wait, what are we talking about now? Oh, I was just talking about on um, like uh, the soundtrack for the, the Deoxys event. And, the Deoxys event? Yeah. Uh, so in the original like Sapphire. The, oh, you just mean the yeah, yeah, no. Well, the, yeah, and then like the battle theme as well. Like that, that's my favorite event. track. I know it's a technically an event, but I just don't yeah. call it that. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was like that's like one of my go-to uh, Gen Three tracks. It's all right. The thing is, like, it sounds good for Gen Three. Yeah. But the moment you try and make it any more. The problem, yeah, the problem is, like, when you compare it to other shit now, and, like, it's not a bad theme on its own, but it, it's just, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's not, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a bad theme, I just think that it sounds better on the older stuff. Yeah. You can't really update it properly. And when they do try and remaster, about... either it will be, like, really good or really, really bad. Yeah, no, it's very black and white with that kind of thing <laughs> but um <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's all right uh, god damn it but um speaking of themes that i can't get out of my head like ever uh giratina's battle theme in Pokemon platinum oh uh, yes is insane like <laughs> that's another one where it's like if you change it at all it just doesn't work there might be some stuff you can add in, but generally the mo like most of it's the same. Like you, if you change it, it doesn't work. 
Yeah. Like, but, oh, God, I love that theme so much. It, like, I'm biased, obviously, because it's, like, my first, like, full game that I made, like, yeah. completed. But, um, d- just seeing, like, the distortion, like, everything about this, like, the setting, Giratina in question, right? Like, you know, like, everything. Like, even the lead-up, like, do you remember the lead-up in Platinum? Like, to yes. Giratina specifically? Yeah, Cyrus. It, well, no, 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 no. No, wait, no, what? what I mean. But, like, no, the just before, like, you encounter it, it you, like, go down the the walkway thing, and then when you, like, as you're going down, um, the, the whole thing, like, tilts down into the, into the abyss, and then, like, you get to the last one, and all of the world starts rotating the other way, like, all yeah. the clouds start rotating. Oh, yeah, so all the, the uh, way. like, puzzles and the... Yeah, everything just... Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, and then as well, like, how they incorporated, like, almost, like, a 3D-like game for what's just mainly yeah, it sprites. it was pushing the limits of the 2D, like... I would say it was pushing certain limits. Like, Black and White probably did that a bit more, with, like, even the bridges in Black and White did that more than... But, like, um, definitely the distortion world, especially, yeah. like, back then, was a huge deal um for the games at least because it was like the first real kind of three-dimensional type of thing they tried to make for a pokemon game yeah um which which by the way god i really hope in the Re- diamond pearl remakes that you fight giratina in the distortion world this time. yeah i just hope they don't like or ruin like an it Delta episode sort of thing like so it what it'd be, be like really like a platinum episode or yeah, something like that. I mean, you wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that. Yeah, I know. I'm just using it as a name. Instead of, you Kinda know, just Delta. Though. It, it'd be really great if they did that. But who knows? They could really just... They could just screw do, everything up. They, can, they, they pretty much do whatever they want. And then as well, yeah. it's not Pokemon themselves doing it. It's... I don't, I don't even know the company yeah, that's look, even doing I it, mean, actually. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like, if they're not happy with the product, then, like, you know what I mean? They could just yeah. be like, well, no. But, um... The game's anyway, a month away of recording, so... And probably will be out well, well, when release. I don't know. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see how well, good it is, I guess. Yeah, and I'll, um, I'll be streaming. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not gonna do plug that. It. I'm not gonna plug it yet. You do that. Oh yet. Um. You're the last episode. Going back to uh, going back to soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. Back to the I proper think, topic. I mean, we could talk about Gen Five for days, but we'll we'll do that in a sec. But like, sure. Uh, well, I'll do that in a sec anyway. <laughs> um, but Gen Six had some pretty good ones. I know a lot of people give Gen Six crap because X and Y like. They weren't like Gen 5. <laughs> they weren't as good, just period. Like, they were coming off the back of two of, like, the best... Like, the two of the best Pokemon games, and then the sequels to those. Oh, yeah. Which were equally good. Um, So, they had a lot to live up to, and um, they kind of just fell a little flat. Yeah. But... Especially with the amount of cut content. From the game. Yeah. So. But the ending of X and Y, you are, you are not a, you are, you are a heartless bastard if you didn't at least like tear up at the end of that game. Because if you don't remember, or if you haven't it's played the it, flo- it's, it's when Flo, flo- returns yeah. to AZ. That is so good. And that fucking music is so good. And yep, there goes another. <laughs> that's it's fine not and, the, and then like, as well like yeah fr- from a game so that was good. what uh when did it come out 2013 like, yeah so yeah like an eight-year-old title like even just going back to that because i'm gonna replay it at some point like, yeah but like x and y it's gonna sound really controversial take uh but it's i think x fine. and y at least in moments, had, like, the same kind of, like, story prowess as Black and White did. 
And like, especially with the AZ arc, but the problem with the game is that they don't explore the AZ arc enough, right? They just kind of mention it. And the only reason it's there, really, well, sorry, no. The only reason it's relevant to the main story is because Lysander Man has the machine and he wants to reactivate it. But I think the story, I mean, it should have been there, but like, I think we should have had more moments with AZ. Yeah, cause because I think like, the only thing that we really saw was the, when we first open up the game is that there's a little story about him. I think it's at the start of the game. I don't remember. I don't I know think so. I think you get told about it like yeah. halfway through. You, you see it at some point and there's like this, I think it was like a proper cutscene for it. Yeah. So you see, like, yeah. It's like a sequence with him. Then you go, all right, that's interesting. And then you don't see anything else until you finish the game. Pretty much. Like you encounter at least that's my recollection. Like twice throughout the game. Once in the power plant, I think. Um, or just before then. Oh, sorry, no, it's at the end of the power plant, I remember. Um, but, yeah, and then, like, un like one other time, and then that's about it. It really hurts how under like, how underused he was, because, like, again, his story was way more compelling than Lysander. Lysander's had, like, no... Like, to me, just... Like, <laughs> he was just another guy. <laughs> yeah, he was just... A bad Brand guy that cool just wanted dude. to, what, destroy the world for some reason? Yeah, some shit like that. He wanted to, like, preserve life or some shit, but, like, the problem was that the machine, like, didn't do that anymore, so he was, I don't know. It was some, like, see what I mean? Like, the plot, yeah. like, with Team Flare at least, is shit. But, like, I remember AZ, and he's only, he was only there for, like... A fraction of the story, and yet he made like the biggest impact to me from those games. Yeah, especially and, like that last moment. Yeah. Oh, feels. God damn! It's like it's not even just like I know I know we're talking about soundtracks. But, yeah, like, yeah, no. just, like the way that what sells it right is like when he's like talking, he like shakes like he's crying. Like there's shit that like people don't give game freaks credit for but like shit like that is like that's the good shit that's the shit that like makes you go oh right emotions are being felt um but now it's all very i don't know I, I, you know what i can't really speak on that but anyway osts yes gen 5 so generation 5 there was some good good tracks in there I, I don't remember all the. <laughs> I don't all remember the these tracks. Type thing. All the tracks, at least. Even though I played the at games least at least five it. times. <laughs> no, six times because I played um, uh, I think I played Pokemon Black in no, Pokemon White in Japanese, and then Pokemon Black Two in Japanese. Oh yeah. Back when I had to do the Jiki to get them. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the main but, things uh, I really remember are the legendary, the gym uh oh, yeah. elite for uh I think it was the rival battle. Yeah, there, there's a lot of themes that are really stick out themes. I, I think the but, um, um wild um battle uh wild Pokemon encounter was actually pretty good. Yeah. It was definitely I mean, it's good a filler change track. up. But, like, it still wasn't the worst. Yeah. But, like, um, Gen 5, uh, some of the tracks that stand out to me, uh, Chorus Battle Theme, 100%. Oh, yes. Oh, like I had banger. that on my iPod for so long. And then talking about iPods. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. But, Things. um. Yeah, I, I listen to that track so much. Champion Iris, Champion Alda, oh. Ends Theme. Ends Theme, Ends Farewell. And that goes without saying, like at this point, uh, uh, what else? God, there's so much, uh, Team Plasma's battle theme, like, Getsus's battle theme. Oh, Getsus one was... Which one was better, do you think? The second game's one, or the first game? I think the second game was better, overall, but 
the first game I think... did have a little bit of unnerving energy, you know, like... I, I liked the first one because, you know, he was the final boss, mm. essentially. And that... <laughs> yeah. And then because uh, you stream, uh, you streamed that last I battle, it, yeah. and... Yeah, and I didn't realize how over-leveled Getsus was compared to you. Oh, yeah, no, it's insane. I completely forgot about that. Like, what, his strongest was a level 60... No, it was a level 50, like, 6 Hydra like Hydreigon. Was it really that? I, I yeah. thought it was higher. No, no, no. But, like, end stuff was only, like, low 50s. Like, the highest thing he had was level, like, 54. And then you go to Getsus, and then he has a level 56 Hydreigon, along with everything else that's, like, level 54 minimum. So, like, he's terrifying. And Hydreigon is a pseudo-legendary, so it's even scarier. It's ridiculously it's... powerful, and the amount of coverage it had. The amount of coverage Hydreigon had, especially back in Gen 5, when there was no fairy, was absurd. Like, Dark Pulse, Draco Meteor, Surf, Fire Blast, like, Focus Blast. All of these things were potential threats. All of them. Um, obviously he didn't have all those moves, but he had, I think it was Focus, Focus Blast, Blast, Surf, Surf um, Dark Dragon Pulse, and Dark Pulse, Pulse I think. Yeah. Which were all terrifying. Dragon Pulse is just a high base power move, and it's stab. Dark Pulse has a chance to flinch, which is, an which is annoying. Um, Focus Blast is a really hard counter to Ice types and Steel types that both resist the other two th moves he has. And then Surf is like, screw the ground types. Because he has Levitate, so he could just counter them. Yeah. It's really scary. Um, and I think it has a Life Orb from memory. Either that or I, something had a Life Orb on his team. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would have been Hydreigon. It had to be Hydreigon. I, I, it's like the only thing I remember that ha would have a life orb. Um, it's... <laughs> but, um, what other tracks? Driftvale City is, like, without saying, I feel. Because it's, like, a meme at this point. Um, Castelia City is pretty good. Opelucid City is underrated. Like, super underrated. Um, the black version is, like, the superior version. Like 100%. Is that the old timey one? No, that's no, the that white version the... one. The black version's the techno, like. Oh, yep, yeah. okay. Guitar sort of thing going on. I love it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Anvil Town. Or, or, yeah, Anvil Town, like, like village. But, like, um, which was the train town, if you remember. You, you go to the station and then you take the train there. Oh and yeah, it's like one of the most chill tracks in the entire game, along with the Village Bridge. Um, Village Bridge was Bridge. interesting. It's a bit of a meme because of the vocals. Yeah, because you can like actually talk to characters, and then they add on to the track and they build yeah. into something. I was about to say, speaking of which, uh, Black and White and all them had something that the other games didn't really have. They kind of did, I think, with Gen 4, but not even then. Like, they had dynamic tracks. So basically, like, um, for example, in route, uh, when you start the game in Route 1, or whatever it is in the games, I can't remember. Yeah, it would have been Route actually, 1. Like, yeah, because in Unova, they just reset the numbers again. But basically, like, um, when you were walking in the first route, it would play snare drums, like a marching snare drum, but then when you stop walking, you would stop playing it. That is so good. Like, it's such a thing, like, it's a thing you wouldn't really notice at first, but then, like, the more you walked around and you'd start being like, oh, shit. Like, the, the, the snares only play when I walk. And it's, I don't know, it's just, it just shows the care they put in. I think, yeah. right? Like, yeah, and it that's, shows, that's like, so a good. lot of detail that they put into this game. Like, no one's really going to notice that. Like, the average consumer isn't going to notice that. Which and, sounds really... And, and like, then it's all, like, it's mainly <laughs> focused towards kids. Like Yeah, exactly. Kids aren't going to stop and go, oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, again, the average kid, anyway. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, 
But I, I mean, we're 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 big kids. So. <laughs> well, yeah. Look, no one's no one's an adult. Everyone's just bigger yeah. kids. Anyway, but there are so many good tracks in Gen Five. It is absurd. Um. <laughs> Oh, even the pl the plasma battle theme in Black and White Two, two. was e arguably even better it, than the It first. was definitely a lot better. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> it's like I, it's like it's like the only villain team I wanted to battle actively because the theme was so good. Like in every other game, you're like, okay, I need to avoid these guys. Yeah. But like now, it's like, all right, come at me. I want to hear this theme again. I want I want to enjoy the good tunes you got. Speaking of themes, okay, this one never okay. really gets attention. Sorry, I'm like going on. No, you're fine. Like, you're fine. Um, another one that I don't think gets enough credit because let's be real, no one really heard it long enough because the fight went for like three seconds. Black and white Kyrem. Oh, yep. Actually, so good. But just no one gives it enough credit because no one it's listens not... to it. Well, because no one has the time. Because by the time you like get into the good parts of the track, it's like over. <laughs> but like, there's some really like oh, that theme is so good. Kind of wish it was the regular Kiram theme as well, because it really fits. <laughs> like but yeah, really. But fits. no, they just stuck with the um, um Retrom and Zakrom theme, which isn't yeah horrible. Isn't terrible. I guess, mm, I kind of wish what happened was like, because the, the um, black and white Kirim theme had elements of the like the regular Zekrom Reshiram battle theme. What I yeah. wanted to happen was they made a separate Kirim theme, but it had elements of that theme as well. So that when you had the black Kirim and white Kirim theme, there were the combination of the two themes together. You know, that would have been extra detail, which yeah, would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been very... People would have been like, holy shit, that's like next level. Because it's it's not a really complicated concept, like when you just say it like that, because it's like, well, they're combined because they're the two Pokemon now. But when you think about like, they didn't have to do that sort of thing, right? That would have been insane to a lot of people. Like, holy shit, they put way too much effort in. <laughs> but um, what other, what other, one? other things are there? Um... But oh, the PWT! Oh yes, Bro. Pokemon oh World God. Tournament. The final, the final round of PWT. I think that's the um, like soundtrack that or the track that they use when you participate in the World Championships. Oh yeah, probably. It's like one of the best. It's yeah. Like so good. Oh, actually, you know what? I would rather them use though. <laughs> Which one is that? Um, and, and you know, this is a thing that I wanted them to keep doing, but they just stopped doing it, at least to my knowledge. I'm not sure if they do it in Sword and Shield, but I doubt it. When the gym leader's on their final Pokemon, the, the theme changes. Oh, the theme changes, yeah. And it's like the best thing ever. Because <laughs> it make the stakes just feel so high. And it's great. Because I feel like they did it really well in Black and White too. Wait, what do you mean? Because I feel like it was a little bit more, um, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, th I thought it was a little bit better than what they did for the, um, uh, first game. I'm pretty sure they were the same, right? What? I, I think they were a little bit different. I don't know, I could be very wrong. I feel like, I feel like they're roughly the same, I, or pretty much. Yeah, same. I could be just remembering <laughs> them wrong. Yeah, potentially. Because like, I haven't heard it in a long time, so. That concept... Yeah. It's really good. And I'm annoyed that they didn't keep it. It didn't have to be the same theme every time, but it just had to be like a different theme, theme that yeah. like kind of amped it up and hyped everyone up because it's like, this is it. The final stretch. Right? Like, fighting, fighting, um, what's her name? Elise. Elisa? Oh, uh, yeah, Elise. Um, that is the scariest fight up to that point. Imolga can piss off. But, like, when you get to the final mod in that fight, it's like, oh my god, please, please just let me win. <laughs> because they just double-team spam you, right? But, like, that's that's the kind of thing where it's like, 
it ju it just works so well. It, it was it was surprising when I first played, but every time I've gone back, I'm like, oh yeah, here it goes. Oh, it's she just... had two Amolgus. Yeah, oh. NSF Striker. That is scary. Yeah, especially if you picked um, Oshawa. Yikes. Yeah, Which you're I not did, having a good by time. The way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on my very first playthrough, I picked um, Tepig. And then I picked Snivy. And then I picked Oshawa. Because I liked Grass Snake more than Samurai Boy. But after playing with all three of them through the game, uh, Samurai's my favorite. Or Oshawa's my favorite. Because Samurai is a badass. And no one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really liked his design, especially when, like, little, uh, kid training to become a samurai, and then, you know, it gets a bit better, and then finally becomes the samurai. I just he love, becomes like, a general. How, I just love how stylized the facial hair is. Like, I just love that. It's, <laughs> I always found it a bit weird that the, um... That they had swords like in their arms, essentially. Which yeah. Was weird, but other than that, it was pretty cool. Um, Superior is still really cool, though, to me. I do like that um, design. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But, um. Sound. Always track. liked snakes. Mm. Um, mm. The only. The only two soundtracks that or like tracks that i really um remember from gen 7 were the champion theme and ultra necrozma because they are just so much better than anything else in the entire game <laughs> like have you played ultra sun yeah I, yeah i have i'm just trying to ultra remember all necrozma, the things on. Yeah, Ultra Net Crossma was. <sighs> he is not only one of the best presented Amazing. encounters in hi in the history of the franchise, but like, jeez, that theme is so good. It's like it's like you're going to church. <laughs> you're going to Pokemon it, it church. Really is. It is, bro. Listen to it. It like if you look it up, I'll you know I'll send it to you. It's it is literally that. And also, what's cool too in game, um. The kind of lead up with the drums, like the boom, ba boom, like it, it all like syncs up with the aura thing. Oh, like in the battle itself. I didn't. If you uh, notice on, that I'll first way through, I'll, I'll Discord stream it really quick. Okay. Uh, can I go any higher than this? Yes, I can. Why is it? Stop doing that. There we go. 4K, baby. Hopefully this works. <laughs> Hopefully it loads. <laughs> Please work. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, maybe I want to put it down to 2k. There you go. Maybe that'll fix it. Come on, baby, load. I might have to go to 1080. There we go. It works. Like, this stuff's fine, right? But, like... Oh... oh. I'll skip ahead a couple. Oh, here we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought it was about to do the battle thing. Alright, here we go. Lie, lie, lie. Nice lag. Epic. Ho, <laughs> ho, ho. It's so good. And then once you get into the full battle, it starts... It, it's, like, out of the lead-up. That's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Like... <sighs> okay, I, guess, I guess he had a cadaver or something. But, um... Yeah, no. That, that stuff is so good, too. I think that matters to me, too. Like... How soundtracks are used and like how they actually like lead them in, I guess. I I absolutely agree. Mm. Like yeah. Ultra Necrozma, I mean it it already sounds really good, but like then you've got just that whole. Oh, this is some of the 
about that's so good. Another thing. Oh, you know another thing for soundtracks. Uh, this will probably be the last thing. Okay. Because because like I've been going on for a while now. But like this. Oh yes, I remember this. Oh. Like man. it's such a short piece of music. This is really loud, actually. My ears. I love how you can hear the heartbeat as well. God, man. Like, man, where's that? Where is that in Gen 8? Like, come on! <laughs> like, is that even in Gen 8? Like, that kind of shit. Like, uh, like realistically. The like the closest thing is when you're fighting Eternatus. Other than that, oh, like, there's okay. nothing remotely close to that. Like, it feels like the more, like, the further we go from the DS golden age of Pokemon, the less, like, things, like, like, legendaries feel less legendary and shit like that. And then as well, like, we're getting less and less legendaries now. As well, yeah. Yeah, I because Generation 8, we've, we've only got, <laughs> like, initially, it was only Zacian, Zamazenta, and Eternatus. Then the others were DLC. And then we finally got Cubfu that evolves into Urshifu. And then it's two forms. And then we got Shadow Horse, Ice Horse, and uh, Calyrex. And then the three birds. Yeah, I wouldn't even count the birds. Like, I wouldn't even count them. And, yeah, because they're just alternates. Yeah. Which, yeah, which is very disappointing. Yeah. It's eight. But, um... <laughs> Yo, Urshifu for Smash? I know I know the Smash. I know there's no more fighters coming, but yeah. damn but it, I wanted Urshifu. Urshifu. Urshifu would have been a really good choice. Yeah, especially with like the fact that he's got two styles. Yeah. They yeah, it just changes the, the skin and you can play different styles. Yeah, well no, not skin, no, it would be a gameplay thing. You would like it Oh what like he the, can change mid like game. It would be like the arts uh with um Shulk or whatever. Oh, okay. Right? So, like, you'd have rapid strikes where, like, you'd have increased attack speed but lower damage, and then his other form would have much better, like, launching potential and shit, but then, like, lower attack speed. So you could do some, like, air combos with the rapid strike, and then when you land, you switch to big boy hit heavy hitman. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought about it. But anyway, well, we got, about Smash. We got, we got Sora, which... Sora, That's... I mean, Sora... <laughs> like, I, I, I know people it, but... are super excited. I'm like... I only played the first Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I didn't play any of them, so I don't really. But I didn't. I never finished it. Sure, I was familiar with the character and all that, but mm. I don't know. I, I just wasn't really interested. I really wanted. Um, I really wanted uh, a Devil May Cry character, but uh, they kind of screwed that over with the me costume. Thanks, guys. <sighs> they they made a Dante costume for me's, but they didn't actually make a character. Yeah, I hate it when they just go. We could how to deconfirm you... fighters in three milliseconds or yeah. less. <laughs> like how to break people's hopes and dreams for characters that they potentially wanted. Yeah, like Virgil would have been cool yeah. in Smash because we had Sephiroth and it could have been like a an edgy white head beat down. That would have been funny. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Um. Should, do we have anything else to add, or should we head to I don't the? Know. Um... I, think I, I think I've kind of milked that entire topic. You you really did. I'm happy I invited you. Otherwise, if I had other co-hosts here, he'd be going like, "Yeah, I heard this one song. It was alright." <laughs> got, any, got any more input? No. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Doesn't have I'm kidding. To elaborate, leaves. Doesn't elaborate because he doesn't mm -hmm. listen to. Game music. Alright, what are we... What and then, we uh... We're gonna be jumping to... 
Who's that Pokemon? So, Who's That Pokemon's a fun little segment here where I just pretty much stole the Who's That Pokemon segment and added own little things to it. So I have two Pokemon here. I'm going to be going through them. So we, I have one, two, three, four, five uh, clues for this one. And hopefully you can get it. And you have, I'll give you three guesses. Okay. If you're unable to get it, that is. Well, in the first one. But. Anyway, uh, first things first, I'm a single typing. When I evolve, I lose parts of my body. My hidden ability is contrary. Uh, any ideas? Uh, superior? On the, on the ball. Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> Just because, like, I thought, right, well, Snivy goes from bipedal to a snake by the time it gets to <laughs> superior, right? And contrary was, like, it's... the best ability ever for... Yeah. Oh I I, God, I, I did li I put this in because of th it leads to the next topic. Um, uh, yeah, and then the other one is like I debuted in Gen Five, and then I was heavily inspired by Lady Oscar. That was like a really obscure one that I wanted to add in. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next one is I nearly said the Pokemon's name by accident. Oops. <laughs> uh, I am part of one of the Elite Four members teams. I am a single single typing. And I debuted in Generation 4. Oh. Yen yeah, Mega? Uh, single typing. Oh! Single typing and debuted in Gen 4. And you're part of Elite 4 member team. Um, I assume you're talking about Gen 4 or Elite 4, yeah? Yes. Considering it was introduced. Okay. Um... Oh, no. I'm going to hate this. I'm gonna think about it. Oh, Magmorta! Ooh, it is not. Um, really? I got one more clue. Okay, yeah. My appearance is different depending on my gender. That really doesn't help. That's like, <laughs> like <laughs> over half the Pokemon in the Pokedex, bro. <laughs> okay. Um, um, can I ask? Can I ask the question of? Or, or can you answer the question of how much does it affect it? Like, sh like, like um, a lot? A the little? color. The color, okay. Single type. Oh, come on. I want to get this because, like, Gen 4 is my third. Oh, come on. And it's an Elite 4 member, so it's not the champion. I'm trying to remember their teams now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to say this out loud instead of trying to whisper because this makes it easier. So, I think the first one had Drapion, Yen Mega, Scizor, and... Oh, what, was the... what was the fourth one? Vespaquen. Oh, right, Vespaquen. Um, yeah. Then the second one was Bertha, Rhyperia... Why can't I remember anything else in her team? God damn it. Did she have a golem? I don't think she had a golem. <laughs> At one point, I think she did. I don't know if they changed it in Was that in the rematch? Them. Was that in the rematch or was that in the... Yeah, Diamond Poe. Because I maybe... Because the thing is, I might be thinking of the wrong team comp because I've played Platinum and I know Platinum. And I've played Diamond and Pearl, but I don't know them as well. Okay, so I'll, been, I'll actually just... double check for you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, oh. It has to be like either one of Lucian's Pokemon or one of, uh, what's his name? Flare Man. I can't remember his name. Uh, Flint. Flint. Very so creative. <laughs> hey, it's better uh, than Flare Man. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I swear it was me. Uh, where okay. is it? Gym. Elite Four. All right, this I is am... in that person's team. In the okay. Platinum. <laughs> All right, and out of these single typings, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven Pokemon in of the entirety of the Elite Four that are single typing. What the hell? Okay, hold on. God damn. Um, that is a big clue. Because <laughs> I've already, I've already said, I've already said you Magmortar. Crossed, we crossed out Magmortar. Mm -hmm. I won't count Yanmega. What do you mean? No, well, you said. Well, you guessed it, and oh, it, was a, it wasn't right. a single type thing. I mean, okay, yeah, fine, fine, all right, fine, fine, fine. Um, okay, so, Flint also had a Houndoom, he also had an Infernape, he also had, um, a fl Flit, no. Or? Flareon? No. It debuted in Gen 4. Yeah, no, I, I figured it wasn't. But I just wanted to say it in case, because okay. I'm like, because uh, it was, um, just, just for clarification on the Gen 4 ones, it was Glaceon and Leafeon that were debuted in Gen 4. Uh, I know that. Okay, just making sure. Uh, but, no, it was just, like, making sure in my head. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck, I want to get this now. And, and then post-game, that Pokemon is still on their team. I can't, I can't think of anything else. Would, um... You want me to push you in a uh, bit more of a easier direction? Sure, then. Sure. Um, Bertha. Okay. Oh my god, I hate my life. I know exactly what it is now. The, it's not even the fact that you said Bertha, but, like, I just... <laughs> It's Hippowdon, isn't it? Yeah, it's Hippowdon. <laughs> God damn it. I was like, what could... Po oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was... Oh, my God. It took a while. Yeah. That sucks. But Magmorta as well was, like, another one. That's the worst part. Is like, that also... Funny was enough, um, that was in episode one <laughs> of the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. And um, uh, Tony, he 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 got that straight away. I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> I mean, he it is like one of Flint's signature Pokemon because he uses it in the um frontier, like when you battle at the front of the battle frontier. It's like one of his oh, yeah, yeah. battle Pokemon or whatever. So, it's and it's also like one of the coolest looking Gen Four designs. Oh, um, it was so. So, so good cool. to see. I remember I drew that once, and I was really proud of it, but the drawing's gone now. <laughs> Fucking disappeared. Bad times. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Jesus, that's... Well, and I thought it was cool. really funny as well, with, like, in uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, when you verse Flint, like, he's supposed to be the fire guy, and then he only has two fire types in his team. Oh, Because <laughs> <laughs> no, his team consisted of Rapidash, Infernape, and then Steelix, Lopunny, and Drifblim. Wait, that's his... F Wait, what? That's his team! <laughs> what? No, it's not. That's his team in Gen 4. No way. <laughs> Diamond and Pearl. It was, that was originally his team. Ew. Like, what the fuck? You, you know, I thought they would have at least put Magmorta in, because that's a oh, new yeah. Pokemon. It's a fire Pokemon. And then also, it's the newest fire Pokemon we got through in Evolution. And <laughs> that yeah, wasn't what? even in there. I know, I know um, Flint uh, in Platinum, I think he had a Torkoal uh, from memory. His, two, his team was Houndoom, Flareon, Rapidash, Inferno, and Magmortar. And then in the oh, right. rematch, it's the same again. thing. Yeah. Rapidash, yeah. like... I don't know, man. <laughs> Rapidash is like one of those Pokemon, you know? You just forget it exists. Yeah. <laughs> like Ponyta, yeah, I get I remember that. Rapidash? Dash. What the? F no, I don't remember <laughs> shit. Rapidash? That's a that's a thing. Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Golduck. Oh, I. Yeah. No one remembers Golduck. <laughs> I anyway. forget every now and then it exists, but yeah. Uh, mm. our next topic of the uh, uh podcast uh competitive Pokemon and you know, and then as well we we both play different formats in competitive. Oh, we've yes. yielded it before, so 
Gonna be a fun, interesting standpoint. <laughs> so yeah. Well, yeah. Um, there are different opinions for. Different yeah, so people. this is gonna be like the big topic that we'll probably want to beat the crap out of each other later on. I don't know. Not really. I mean, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, no. But Better like, to Pokemon ruins friendships. Jokes. Oh uh, well. <laughs> um, I mean. <laughs> it depends. For a big tournament, I would assume so. <laughs> Off the tournaments, yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. I guess I'll start. Uh, I've been playing competitive Pokemon for uh, about nine years now. I started at around about two thousand and twelve when I did my first online tournament in Black and White Two. I just you. I just asked someone, "Hey, does someone have a team for this event?" And then yeah, now I have that team. Which consisted of Crobats, the Therian forms, Frostlass, and a Crocodile. Mm. I think that I think that was the team that I played, and I don't remember how well I did. It was so long ago. <laughs> and yeah, I've just been playing competitive ever since. I uh, used to be a bit more um, big brain, and then I went to meta for a little bit, and now I'm going back to big brain because you know. It's a lot better to, you know, be smart and know how to play the game than go, Oh, Kyoga, Origin Pulse, Water Spell, I win game, right? Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I'm just sick, sick of those strategies where people just go, Oh, I only play meta. Oh, why? Because I don't have brain. I don't know how to play the game. <laughs> no, it's... um. Copy and paste team, I, I win. It's frustrating to play competitive Pokemon... Because, I mean, to be fair, it's the nature of any competitive game. People are going to gravitate towards the stuff that lets them win easier. But, like, it's still nonetheless a little frustrating. Yeah. Because there's so many, like, fun teams out there that can still work pretty well. Like, I consistently run Octillery on most of my teams in Showdown. And, like, it works pretty well because a lot of people just forget that Octillery has a lot of damage. It's pretty funny. But, um... With the meta for singles, at least... I know doubles is... I think doubles is actually worse. Yeah, it's really um, bad. Because you only get four mons to choose when you, like, put them in. You get four mons, Adam's and a teams. lot of Pokemon have, um... A double... Uh... Adjacent hitting moves. So, you're always getting hit in both slots, no matter what, unless you... Counter with Wide Guard. Yeah, no. But I feel like not, not everyone runs Wide Guard at this point, so. No one runs Wide Guard at this point, really. And the reason is. Not much people run it. Because it's not really good mons well, to really <laughs> use it. Well, it's just it's easy to predict when it happens. Because it's essentially protect, but for, um, like, for both people. Like. Like, it's not a bad move, but it's just the. Like, everyone expects it now, so no one uses it. You know, it's it's like that paradox. Yeah. It's like everyone expects protect, so like it's not that no one runs protect, but it's just very easy to play around protect because it's protect. It does no damage. It does nothing else. It's why things like um, baneful bunker and stuff are so powerful because they do stuff and they protect you. Right. Like yeah. baneful bunker poisons you if you make contact with the. Uh, Pokemon in question that used it. And with like things like King Shield as well, like oh my god. King Shield when it like I mean, like, even now decreases attack, which is crazy. Decreases attack by two stages. Two stages. Which is just ridiculous. I forgot it, it should have been only one stage. One stage, yeah. But yeah, no, it's um wow. The 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 doubles meta to me feels yeah and i know i know like dynamax and stuff are basically banned but here's the thing uh it's coming uh, back i feel well, like as like this podcast is up it'll be back. back yeah what it'll be back and then we'll also have access to um a mythical so we're using legendaries as well why why are they doing this because they're and... mean and they don't want to put a they don't want to make a ban list 
because yeah, they but, like, did. We already have a ban list. It's called Ray Mega Rayquaza. We don't have Rayquaza. Megas in the game, so. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. I I, I, I miss Mega Rayquaza. It was so fun to use. Man, uh, I mean, I'm pretty yeah. much prepared for the next format anyway with the teams that I built. Mm. But yeah, so pretty much like when I go with team building, I go showdown and then see how it goes. But I, I, and then as well, like it seems that playing in game is a lot more consistent mm. with um showdown because everyone seems like they're playing on even playing field when in. Uh, in the game, people are usually just don't EV train, and then you can just go, I win. Or yeah, IV no. train. So yeah, that's pretty, at least that's how I feel. And then as well, like, especially with my team, when it's like half of the team's not even meta. Mm. And I, I like it that way, because as well, like, there are two Pokemon on my team that people wouldn't be familiar with. Especially at, at this format, or last format, I should say, at time of recording. Uh, which is, I'm running Turtonator and oh, yeah. Blastoise. Mm. Who's gonna... Who, who else runs them? I mean, my friend does, because he's known as Turtonator Guy. On He, he literally named his um, game file Turtonator Guy. And he forever lives... I think on Turtonator has a lot of potential, though. Similar to Octillery, in that, like... A lot of people forget that, like, Octillery, again, like I said, uh, hits really hard when you actually get hit. But it's the same with Terminator, is that Terminator hits, like, a truck, but he's slow. So, like, everyone just kind of forgets that he's a threat. Yeah, and then especially as well. And hits you once with a Draco Meteor, and you're like, ow, help. <laughs> it's but, it's um... alright dealing damage, but... I just use it as, like, an anti zarsian or Grass, or whatever. See, I wouldn't use Terminator for that, because he, Pod Dragon essentially opens you up for being weak to Fairy. But here's and the thing. No one fairy. really runs Fairy types on Zarsian, and then as well, no one respects the Terminator play. No, well, I mean, I guess. I, I see know, that happen there's... a lot. Like, they just don't disrespect it, and they just ignore it. Mm. At least in singles, there's an abundance, though. Like, the th the the main types that always get used no matter what, there's, like, four of them. Uh, fighting, fire, ground, and water. They're, like, the big four, right? And so, basically, like, even in doubles and stuff like that, I would always build my teams to counter those four. Um, because they're the biggest threats in the entire game, and they are the most common types. So, like, Terminator's fire, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, like, he's weak to ground and rock, which, ground again, really strong offensive type. I know it's probably not super common in doubles meta right now. Uh, Landorus Therian form is very uh, common. Okay, well, apart from him, because honestly, Trick Room only... teams just nullify him completely. I think it's only um, Landorus, Entei, because it uses Stomping, and uh, Calyrex, Ice. I think they're the main uh, ground-type users. You say Calyrex, Ice? Yeah, it uses high horsepower. I'm not talking about moves, I'm talking about typing. I'm just typing in general. It's, because, it's just Landorus, yeah. I think. Just Landorus, okay. Because ground-type moves... That's not the issue. It's the fact that ground type moves that are stab are uh, terrifying, especially with things like Landorus, because again, high attack and all that. Um, but like my thing with competitive, and I said it the moment I saw Gigantamax, I'm like, why are they doing this? Why are they actively making competitive less, like use less of your brain every time? We had Megas, and Megas were good because Megas opened up a new door for a lot of Pokemon that were out of the meta completely. Like, Beedrill was never used ever. <laughs> ever. And then suddenly got a Mega, and now, like, back, like, into UU, at, like, the very least. So, 
Mega's, like, had some of the strongest impact in the game without being entirely broken. There were <laughs> some that were broken. Yep. But, like, most of them were just really good boosts that the Pokemon needed. Like, again, Beedrill with adaptability and massive speed and attack increase, exactly what the Pokemon needed. Perfect. Like, and it got access to Drill Run in Gen 5 as well. So, like, and Drill Run has a high crit ratio, and it deals with its rock weakness. And its poison issue, because it can't use poison-type moves against, like, poison types. So I'll just use Drill Run, which is super effective. Right? So, but it, then they went to Z-moves, and Z-moves were fine, I guess. But because they were limited to one, it kind of sucked. <laughs> I think well, obviously, like, if it wasn't limited, it would still be, it would be worse. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, why would you take Megas out? Megas were fine, because the thing is, is Megas made the Pokemon better without restricting you. You still, the only thing that was restrictive was the item. Yeah. But the item was barely an issue with Megas because Megas was so good. But again, they could be counted. Again, most of them could be. There were yeah. some that, again, were pretty insane. Like Mega Pinsa, Mega Salamence. Mega Kangaskhan um, was just disgusting. Mega Kangaskhan was in Uber. Especially, forever. yeah, when it, when it first came out and, and then they just nerfed bond it. wasn't nerfed. Like, that Pokemon was insane. Um, I can't oh, remember. I don't sec. think Mega Gengar stayed in Uber for long. It was there, but it kind of dropped off again because of uh aegis slash um oh who's in the background there? <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> oh, okay i thought i thought it was just him talking in the background and then you were like oh. just kind of staying quiet but no um Anyway, where was I? Shit. Uh, talking about flexibility, I think. Oh, no, I was talking about, um... I was talking about Mega Pinsa, and then I was talking about... You know what, let's just go to a different thing. Okay. Not, not entirely different, but, like... Huh. Mega Ampharos was another good example of, like... A lot of people shit on Mega Ampharos, because, like, it's slow as hell, like, why would I use it? And, like, the the one answer is Trick Room. Trick Room, yeah. <laughs> trick Room, and, like, it suddenly becomes the scariest, like, electric type in the game. It's the only other electric dragon type in the game. Or in or at least when, when it was when it a was, thing, anyway. Yeah. It was the only other electric dragon in, the, in that, at that time. I think there's an electric dragon now, right, in Gen 8? The fossil? Yeah, um, Dracozolt. Yeah, and it sucks, so... <laughs> I'm it's glad so they... frail. It's so bad. Like, the it's only way for it to anything. live is if it uh, dynamaxes. But then again, it's just funny when people just go, I feel they like, use it, and then it you know, goes. You know, I think that's the problem with Gen 8. Here we go. We've gone from competitive... This does relate to competitive, though. Yes. It does. So, Gen 8... Have you noticed how skewed the stats are in a lot of mons? Yes. In Gen 8? Like, what's the elephant one called? I uh, Copperaja. Copperaja. Basically, that thing has no defense. <laughs> like, no, or no special defense. And it's like, why? And then you realize it's because it can Gigantamax. It's not because you know, that's how they want it to be. It's because they have to nerf its stats so that its Gigantamax isn't broken. <laughs> because the problem is, if you make it a Gigantamax and you give it decent stats at its fully evolved form or whatever, normally, suddenly your Gigantamax is broken. Because if you have a Gigantamax with, like, 200 base defense on both stats, like, what can yeah, you do? That thing is just eating damage. I yeah, wouldn't know because that's... I played enough. <laughs> I I used um well, Blastoise isn't like crazy high, but when I played um 
assault vest blastoise like it was just eating damage from all special attackers and it was just destroying everything yeah but but the fact it it it's gigantamax isn't just ruining competitive because of what it is it's ruining competitive because it's actively making the design of pokemon worse because they have to power down the non-Dynamax forms and everything, so that when they are Dynamax, they can be dealt with without having to Dynamax. This is the problem, right? And this is why, like, when I... Like, because I've talked about this at length with other people, but, like, I've only kind of just really realized it about, like, why the stats are so low on, like, in certain parts of the, the mons and stuff, and it's, like, it's because... The, like, the Dynamax would just make them broken. It's why Eternatus, Gigantamax or whatever, is completely banned. Because if you... That thing has the highest it, stats in the it has the, existence. It has the highest stat total of any Pokemon to exist. Even Ultra Necrozma doesn't even, like, kick a stone at it. Like, it's just ridiculous. Yep, base stat total, 1,125. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's, isn't it, like double Arceus that's almost uh, that is double Arceus hold on hold on I'm checking what's the base stat total 508 <laughs> it's oh. over double god stats <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what the hell uh. but this is what I mean it's 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 it... well I mean I know why they made that those stats so high though because they wanted a raid battle sort of thing at the end. But yeah, they the wanted thing. a boss battle. Here's the fucking thing, though. They could have had... They could have made it have normal stats. Even in Gigantamax. Or, well, still higher, but, like, still manageable stats in Gigantamax. And then made, like, a raid form later or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. But, like, the point is, is, like, why are we doing this? Why are we suddenly just making everything power creep central? Everything has to be Dynamaxed or it sucks. Like, I don't want to live in a world... Like, because the thing about Megas, again, right, is some Pokemon that had it, like Beedrill, for example, were pretty useless outside of their Mega. But there were some that could Mega as an option rather than a requirement. Yeah. Like, personally, I don't think Pinsir really needs to evolve, like to Mega Evolve to actually be good, but it's much harder for him to be good without the Mega. As in, like, he has Moxie and stuff like that, so he's basically Heracross but slower. But when he gets up, his attack's much higher, so it's like a trade-off. But in his, in his um, Mega form, he has Quick Attack with Aerialate, which is, like, very good. For a multitude of reasons, obviously, but yeah, like just yeah. it's like one of the things you do it for. But um, I'm just I'm just sad, man. Like that Mega's gone because Megas were like the thing that really made the game feel like or competitive feel kind of new again. Cause Z moves just feel like <laughs> if every move got a hyper beam variant. Yeah, pretty much something <laughs> that know? has high. Yeah, high uh, damage power. and can go through protect because fuck it, right? Well, um, they, they're like, I think they made it so it only did like fifteen to twenty five percent damage. It wasn't a whole lot. Yeah, if I, you had if you protect against it. Yeah, I guess, but it's still kind of absurd. Yeah. And then as well, but like depending like... on the ones that you use, you can get like a defense attack boost. All mm -hmm. these different things. And then it was um, also single, so it's only for, like, the Pokemon that actually use the move. And then with Dynamax, it affects both Pokemon. That's kind of the biggest problem, is that um, what I think, if they wanted to make Dynamax... <sighs> the problem is that if they made it this way, it would still be bad, because you, they'd only be using certain Pokemon, like, like, like three or four. But I was going to say, like, if they made it so every move had a different effect, like, it was essentially just, like, it would just be, like, instead of acrobatics, it would be max acrobatics, right? And it would, instead of, it, like, it would have higher damage, but then it would have, like, an additional effect. 
like for example uh i don't know acrobatics it's like when you have no item you do double damage and you gain plus one speed upon use like to me as much as that's overpowered as hell I, i'm assuming it will sense. only be for the ac uh, for the pokemon that use the max acrobatics yeah obviously like but like but still but my point is like more that it's um it's overpowered but like it still makes sense because it's using the moves you have the problem i have is that it makes every move that's one like a type that one move forever for everything yeah well not forever you know what i mean but like it never changes between um, moves. So, like, if I have Sky Attack versus uh, Fly, it'll still be, um, what is it, Max Airstream or something? Yeah, Max Airstream. Whatever it's called. It's always the same. It's never a different effect based on the move it converts. It would have been cool if Max uh, Sky Attack was a thing where it would essentially be an insta-use move. Like, it would just go from... It would be, like, a slight power bump or maybe not even a power bump but essentially you would have free power herb for three turns on sky attack which would make sky attack viable yeah make it like a useful move again yeah but that's what, yeah exactly it's like also sky attack has had some really cool animations in the past and they've never had them like like no one's ever used it enough for anyone to go wow that's pretty cool no one can admire the amazing animation <laughs> Hey, not everything's amazing, right? I'm really giving credit to like Gen Four and shit. Well, yeah, like, like cause they're the cool. Is, like black, and then like you've got like the blue kind of, like the dark blue effect. It's really nice. Yeah, but and anyway, then the attacker could you? Yeah, like, like that shit. Obviously, yeah, I can remember. It's like Brave Bird, but more flashy. But more cooler, yeah. Yeah, more cinematic. But it just. It's shit like that that makes me go like, God damn it! Like, imagine if Brave Bird, Max Brave Bird just removes the recoil penalty. Oh, that, that would be sounds, such a... That sounds like such a small thing, but that's massive so, for competitive. Yeah. That's huge. And in regular gameplay, that's just good. Because it's just no recoil for using a strong move. It's the thing with Flare Blitz and, like, um, Head Smash. The like, double all edge. those moves. Yeah. Double edge, like Giga Impact, like all those moves that require you to wait a turn just like to charge up again, like that effect can just be removed for three turns. This again sounds overpowered, but the thing is, it's again, it is it is limited. That's the one thing I'll give them credit for is that they've limited it f for a certain amount. And you can't really, you can't Gigantamax after that. You can only Gigantamax once, I'm pretty sure, right? Yep. So, there is timing in it, but I really, like, it wouldn't be hard, like, realistically, because the the amount of effects you can remove from a move to make it better, or add, like, you don't have to do much to make them worth, like, Gigantamaxing for, or whatever. Like, imagine Toxic, it's like, um, you poison a target, um, or maybe make it so tox Max Toxic... Uh, is it hits adjacent foes as well, so it poisons both. And then as well, like it can go battle. through uh, immunity as to or poison. It can go, yeah, or it has like a corrosion effect where it just poisons anything. That could be cool. Or even like the ramping of the poison is doubled, so like essentially the toxic that like the toxic damage ramps up twice as fast. I don't think that would be a good effect. I feel like that'd be way be, too actually, strong. It's not even just because of the strength, but the complexity of like the numbers and everything having yeah. to change mid battle. But definitely something like hitting adjacent foes or hitting through protect or something. Maybe not hitting through protect, that'd be a bit fucked. But <laughs> you get my point. And yeah. then like, I don't know. Status moves are kind of difficult. I mean, I feel like status moves just shouldn't change because generally like they're already pretty strong. Um, but yeah, like you could do some cool shit, like that, and you don't need to do much with the moves. You just need to make them. Again, like imagine if Steel Beam didn't take fifty percent of your goddamn health to use. Like, <laughs> yes, please give me that. Make it a good move. Yeah, crazy. <laughs>
Um, I don't know. Like, you can even do a thing with like Iron Defense, where it's like Iron Defense gives you it's like normal defense increase and everything, like the same thing, but it makes you heavier. So like Pokemon like Agron would actually run Iron Defense so they can use Heavy Slam more effectively. You know what I mean? Like yeah. moves that you'd never consider using. As much as they probably wouldn't be meta, like let's be real. But like they'd still be like a thing you could use because it's like, oh, I can actually set this up and then do this, right? Like, I don't know. Like like yeah, just change it up. It would be it would just be interesting. Like shit, man. Yeah, just like, make just make the game more um Make it slightly more complex and suddenly yeah. like possibilities just start coming out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely like make the game a bit more, you know. Yeah, obviously complex. Like sure, kids game, but I I like, said this in episode one, like are are they really saying that like children like nowadays back from like like kids from twenty I'll I'll say like the twenty tens are really that dim? I, are, are they really think, doing? Are they really I doing that? Kids, I think the kids who are born past two thousand are actually more in tune with this sort of stuff, like because, <laughs> like it's all numbers and shit. But like the thing is, online Pokemon community, generally speaking, is mainly competitive based. So like, any interactions they have online with other like people who are like Pokemon related. Um, they're talking about competitive or they're talking about the new releases, both of which bring up topics about competitive. <laughs> yep. So I don't think, I don't, I think Game Freak is just completely ignorant. I, I don't think they understand like what the current age is like, like is like, I think they're just assuming <laughs> even yeah, even if they know. have num the, the numbers, quote unquote, it's like the thing is they're aiming at a market that it may be part of their sales, but I feel like the people that talk about the game and like talk about how good the games are aren't the kids at all. It's the people who have been playing the game since Pokemon Red. Yeah, been playing since ninety five, or, or even you know since Gen three or Gen two or whatever, right? But like. I don't know. It's um, it's just weird. It's just weird yeah. that they're trying to appeal to a like. Obviously, at the end of the day, it is a kids' game, but technically. Still, but like, like, but it's played by a multitude of different age groups. You know, you know what I wish they would actually bring back. Mm. Uh, do you remember the feature in Black and White Two where they can make it an easy mode or a hard mode? Or challenge oh, yeah, mode. 100%. Yeah, 100%. they should just bring that back. That should just be default, like how it works. Yeah, is I bring bring that back works. because, you know, I don't want to play with like, oh, you have to go here to complete the game, because there's just so much hand holding in this. Like it's so bad in Sword and Shield. Like mm, sure, Sun and Moon had it, but. So, Sword and Shield is just the worst so far. Mm. Like, at, they have a mini map where they go, this is where you need to go. And they even give you, like, text that goes, you have to go here and talk to the professor or whatever like that. Yeah. Like, it's gotten s to that point. Where, you know, we yeah. go back and play Pokemon Red. It's just simple as, okay, go to here. The dude says go back to Professor Oak. Go to Professor Oak, and then you can go on your journey and play the yeah. game. A lot of people complain about black and white being linear, and it's like, the reason it's linear, though, is because it's a story-focused game. It's not an exploration-focused game. Um, so, in that regard, I can, like, I can understand why people don't like it for that, but, like, at the same time, it's like, the game, it's a different sort of thing, like, you know, like, it's a different experience overall. Um, it's still a Pokemon game, but, yeah. Um... 
it's it's a lot more story orientated than the exploration part. Um, oh. There's still some stuff, like there's still places to go after you know everything's done, but um, yeah, uh. because you you essentially go through the entire path, right? Because you start at the bottom right, and you kind of just go in the loop. Yeah. And then up to the Pokemon League. But, like, again, like, I'd be more mad if the story was, like, terrible. <laughs> yeah, like, it but just it had no s good story to it. Like, if there was no reason for me to be so restricted, then I would be like, what the hell? But yeah. because the story is good and it's told well, I don't really mind because I'm actually paying attention to the story and not to, you know, like, small shit like you know well i can't go over here so screw this what i need to beat the gym leader just to get past here i will say one criticism i have of um black and white 2 especially um getting to a high enough level i mean actually no it might have just been a different version i can't remember now but I'm pretty sure I remember having to grind a lot for the first few gyms because there wasn't a lot of encounters between the gyms at first, which was weird. But that's really the only thing. But at the end of the day, like they're still really good games. So yeah, for be... yeah, I'm just trying to remember for Black and White Two. Yeah, there wasn't really like a whole lot of like areas compared to the two. I mean, like between the, the first and the second gym, there was barely anything, and that's kind of what yeah. sucked. Because you couldn't... The only place you could go was the... The, actual, um, the ranch that actually had good encounters. Place. No, the factory area, like, in the in Verbank. If you go down south, there's, like, that factory area that you have to go to to get to the... I, I can't remember who you have to talk to there, but you talk to someone, and then it's like... Oh, yeah, and then yeah. you can talk to... Oh, then you can finally go into the gym versus Roxy. I think I think that's how it went but that area um yeah like I'm probably remembering it wrong like at least the originals but um mm, it was definitely a bit more difficult than black and white one at least yeah but, you know which was which was nice I, I just yeah, want yeah. more challenges to the Pokemon games <laughs> I just think the end game for Pokemon has always struggled. And I know like people talk about the Sword and Shield raids, but like I still I'm like, like honestly, the they got so boring very quickly. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's like what I expected them to be cuz when I think of a raid, I think of like <laughs> multiple different fights and He he like thinks that. destiny. <laughs> well, no, well, any game with raids in it like it's not just like fight a thing, then you're done. It's it's a bit more than that. Oh. Um, like, you know. Um, but I'm not saying I'm not saying expected raid mechanics. But what I expected was like, for example, like a certain fight, like kind of like Eternatus even with like the sort of, uh, I guess you could call it a white mechanic he had. If you remember, like the. Uh, it's like a certain amount of turns, and then he uses the thing, and then it does like a huge amount of damage. Oh yeah. Um, but that's sort of what I'm talking about. Like, even if it's just stuff like that, where you have to use like specific types of moves. Like, a really good example of this, and <laughs> it's really funny that I'm mentioning a mobile game. But uh, there's a mobile game that had like these sort of trials, right, or essentially like dungeons. Yeah. Um, and they would have m uh, enemies that you would have to hit, like, with when they when certain dialogue um, played, um, like cues, you'd have to use like um, only a limited an, um, amount of attacks, bef um, unless you'd have to use a limited amount of attacks, or they'd just kill you. So, or you'd have to use a specific attack, otherwise they'd kill you. So there were like timings to it all. So like, if you went into a thing and it's like. For example, in my head, I can imagine a thing for Pokemon where it's like, so you need ice types, fire types, and, I don't know, ground types, right? Yeah. And the reason it tells you that at the beginning is because you need those types of moves to be able to beat the boss at all. 
And the boss would literally just be like, every so often, it would just be like, even if it was like a protein sort of thing. Um, well, it wouldn't actually be that, but like, it would say like this. It's like suddenly, like the the terrain changes to I don't know fire, and so now you can't use fire moves against them because they'll like hit you real hard for it. Or right? have and like stuff. a uh flash fire effect where if you hit it it'll just get a boost it, exactly it gets like a boost to all stats or something something like that where it's like and like people will complain like oh well that's too restrictive and it's like it's supposed to be the end game <laughs> it's end supposed game to be is difficult inherently restricted if you can't if you can't bear restriction, then you can't have difficulty. It is literally how difficulty works. At the end of the day, as much as we hate to admit it, generally speaking, um, they one th whatever they restrict, they're restricting something to make something more difficult. In in games, that's just how it works. Whether it be how much you find in terms of ammunition or something in like a shooter, or in um, I don't know, in something like an RPG, like you can't heal now right like stuff like that it's like they're restricting you because that's the only way to make it harder without making it just like here more here's more enemy <laughs> and in pokemon it would be the same thing it like well not the exact same thing but like you know you can only use these types of moves at certain times or don't use these types of moves at these certain times and like possibly even have a boss where it's like every so or like if you hit him with the wrong move at the wrong time you can't use healing items anymore like or at least for a set amount of turns like you know what i mean like it's so obvious how easy it would be to make this sort of content at least semi like brain like neuron activated yeah but like no one talks about it and it's just kind of frustrating because <laughs> I don't really want to get into it too hard, but, like, the people who defend this crap and, like, say the games are perfect are just as blind as the people who are saying the games are completely bad as well. I don't think Sword and Shield's completely bad or anything. I just think that there are a lot of things that... They, they, they could have done a lot do better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but... Anyway, jeez. But hopefully they anyway, improve that in Gen 9. competitive. <laughs> what even is Gen Nine at this rate? Like we we, I, we don't actually have anything about Generation Nine. Like we don't even have. I don't think they even made a trademark or anything yet. And but apparently they said 2022 is yeah. when they'll maybe announce something. And disclaimer: Legend Arceus does not count as yep. Gen Nine. It does not count. And people who really think that, you are not smart. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. It's a Gen 4 remake, but not really. <laughs> At all. It's just Gen 4, but before Gen, Gen 4, 4 before Breath Gen of the 4. Wild. <laughs> it's Gen 4, Breath of the Wild. There you go. <laughs> That's literally what it is. And the thing is, what sucks, right, is like... I have... I have equal hope and like fear for the game right now yeah because, i mean like, just hearing like all these rumors i'm like really concerned there are a lot of things that could be really good um for one i actually do like as goofy as it looks i do like the fact that you can free fly that is a thing that we've and and people go but ladios and ladios and auras and it's like that was not free when... flying <laughs> what <laughs> it's just funny that people just go, yeah, but this, no, no. It's like no. Have, have you played the game? Yeah, have have you like, have you seen the trailer? Like, sure, you can fly around the map. Sure, I guess, but it's not like you can look down and see people, like see Pokemon moving around, and like actually see the world. You just see like a, a JPEG. <laughs> you see a really crappy a really overview image. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then the only thing that's even, like... And it's not like you can land anywhere. You can only land in towns. and all Yeah. That. Like, you, you can't even, like, land anywhere. in the middle of, like, the arouse or even the water. Yeah, exactly. So, in that respect, things like that are really cool. Uh, exploration is always a good thing for these kinds of games especially. But then there's stuff like... 
like, okay, I know the forms are cool, but a lot of them just don't make any sense being in a Gen 4 game. Why are Gen 5 Pokemon getting forms in a Gen 4 game? Why? Uh, another question. Why aren't the Gen 4 Pokemon <laughs> getting, getting, Gen new form. Like getting new forms? Yen Mega is a big one for me, but I know it probably won't get one anyway. But things like, I don't know, like... I'm like, the only problem that makes Earth sense is like Weirdeer, because that's like Stantler. Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess. Um, But where's Girafferig? as well like yeah. we've got a stand one now but now we need giraffe rig um and like you know it would have been cool to see like i don't know man like imagine if we saw a heat transform where he's just fully metal because like remember the pokedex entry talks about how he used to be fully metal like he was fully made like he had the steel armor on all of his body but then it melted away Oh, I didn't actually remember that. It says it. It's like, um, I, I can't remember. I think it was in Diamond and Pearl. But basically it was like, yeah, his... Because his head's got the armor on. Yeah. Or the, like, he's steel there. But, like, his body has, like, specks of steel, like, in it. So, it, which implies that, like, it was melted in, like, into, like, the, the lava that, well, is Heatran, essentially. Yeah. But it would be kind of cool to see a different form of legendaries like Heatran, because again, like, <laughs> you could make him, I don't know, it just you could just make him a steel ground type, and then make him, because he would still have earth power and all that, but then you yeah. can make him have some cool ability like, I don't know, <laughs> like, maybe make it so his steel moves also count as fire moves or something for his ability. That'd be cool. That'd be really interesting, yeah. Because it would still kind of give him the fire typing without really giving it to him. Yeah. Um. And then, like, to see, for, like, we'll just quickly glance also, on this topic. Like, mm, what if we get, like, the primal, like, Dialga and Palkia? I was about to say that. I was literally about to say that <laughs> primal Dialga and Palkia haven't shown up yet. Like, it'd we be don't cool have to a see those. Palkia officially, like, in any game, but we have primal Dialga. Yep. Now, Pokemon it's probably Mystery not the design they'll go with, but it would definitely make a lot of sense. Um, we also need Primal Giratina. I don't care if he has an origin form already. I want a Primal form. Because Primal Giratina sounds like the most monstrous thing ever. I'm just looking at, like, uh, fan oh, art. concept art? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if Primal Giratina... Oh, Primal Giratina is a thing, I think. Or at least in fan art. <laughs> in they're they're interesting. One of them is uh Reggie Gigas. He's just like what? covered in like rock and shit. It's really weird. There's some really good ones. Um. Oh, that's kind of cool. Probably not. A game design. Probably not a thing I you'd see in the game, but... Yeah. Cool. It's but like, cool to see, like, designs like that. Like, this one's the most common one I've seen. Oh, it's actually in a ROM hack. Ooh. Um, this one... Uh, oh, Pokemon Insurgents. Right. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that thing looks so cool. If you just make the white bits yellow, like, that would work pretty well. That'd be so cool. Um, and then like his Shadow Force animation, he just goes zoom into the portal again and then yeah. disappears. That'd be so sick. But um, where's Pri oh, Hold on, let's see if there's surely there's a Primal Palkia um fan art thing. Oh wow, that's really cool. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I like that one. I think I think uh we found the same one, right? Hold on. Uh most likely. Yep. Yeah, no. If that was, like, made a bit more, I guess, glowy. <laughs> like, instead of the solid pink, it was, like, all glowing. Glowing, pink, yeah. You know, like, yeah, that would be really Just like how Primal Dialga is, um, glowing. Yeah, no. Primal Dialga would be easy enough. They'd, uh, they'd have to extend, like, okay. 
they'd have to make him spikier though. Like, yeah. Surely. Like if Primal Palkia would look like that, then surely like Primal Dialga would look. Uh... Oh, that's cool. I kind of like that design. Hold up. Oh no. <laughs> um, this is prediction. The prim the Primal Palkia in that one, eh? But like the Dialga one, and the Dialga one would also have that kind of. Uh, back disc thing that Palkia has. In yeah, the, the one that I'm looking at ha has a diamond on its back. Oh. Oh yeah. Obviously, like maybe not exactly those dimensions or anything, but like definitely um more like more spiky. Oh, okay. I just found one that I kind of like more than the other one. This one's really nice. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that one looks yeah, a lot cooler. Good. But definitely, like, just make all the spikes spikier. Yeah. And, like, kind of make him look bigger because of it. Just... Mm. Yeah. And then, anyway... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, from, um... Like this, um, I'll quickly do, like, a small announcement. That's if people are listening. Um, who, who are listening in just now. Because we are live jokes. <laughs> that'd be that'd be really weird. <laughs> press press the streaming button instead of the recording button. That almost happened once. Oh my god. But anyway, um so yeah, uh, on when this video is uh when this podcast is out, uh I'll be doing like a really fun series with like I'm pretty much gonna be asking a bunch of my friends to make me competitive Pokemon teams. Like, they could do whatever they want. Like, they have free range to do a team of... Just give me a team of six. That is competitively legal. And, yeah. I'm going to be using them in Master Ball tier and see how well that goes. <laughs> but, yeah. That, that's one of the things I want to shamelessly plug. And I'll be on Twitch and YouTube at some point. Nice. That's if I get to Master Ball tier. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going through, like, more shit now. Yeah? And, like, I just found, like, a Mega Ho-Oh thing that could be used as, like, a Primal Ho-Oh. Oh, nice. Ooh! I mean, definitely play into the rainbow part of yeah. the Ho-Oh, because, like... The face looks really off-putting. I mean, yeah, it's fan art. At the end of the day, like... Can't make it look super, super good. Primal Arceus, like, some of the Primal Arceus stuff's really nice. Um, like, this one is really good, I think. It's not exactly what I'd want, but, like, pretty close. Like, I like the little mask thing for it. Plates. Yeah, and the mask is cool, but, like, his, uh, crest thing on his body having all the plates, plates in it yeah. is like, really nice. Um. That'd be else? really nice to see. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll wrap up the competitive Pokemon standpoint, and we'll go to Pokemon mispronunciation. So people that you've heard mispronounce Pokemon very badly, or in the past that you mispronounce Pokemon, and then yeah, we'll go yeah, on from. I mean, the most notorious mispronunciation that I know of is uh, Arceus, Arceus, you know, all that. Oh, yeah. Some people say Arceus. And I'm like, no. Oh, that, that is just wrong in so many levels. That'd be double C, firstly, and secondly, just no. Yeah, because... But... Yeah, mm. definitely Arceus, because, you know, if you say Arceus, it means but in uh, Britain it's and Bruce here. <laughs> Australia. No, but... um. And they don't want it to be a naughty word. Or a I naughty Pokemon. About saying Arceus, though, is like technically, yes, you could pronounce it Arceus, but every piece of media in anime has called it Arceus. So, I'm gonna go with the official material. Yeah, on that. so pretty much what you want to try and do is go with the official material, and then if you I'm realize that they've done it wrong, then yeah, I just go with um. Because back in the day, there was a um, little app for the 3DS called the uh, Pokemon 3, uh, 3D 
Perka decks. I think it's called, that was mm. called the 3D Perka yeah, decks. Yeah, yeah, the three the three decks or something. The Perka. Yeah. So yeah, that thing you can get on the 3DS that was like accurate, more well, mostly accurate. I don't. I think that was like one mispronunciation that there was in that. But yeah, I wish they made like a more modernized one. I mean, sure, there's like nearly 900 Pokemon now at this point. Like, yeah. Just, 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 just do it. Or well, when Gen 9 comes out, just go have like a full thing of how to pronounce all the Pokemon in all different languages or just English and Japanese. And as well, for like Pokemon that I've heard someone else mispronounce is um Lunala. They mispronounced that pr and they said it as L L Lunala. Lunala. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, what? sure, it's a kid, and then like you hear the parents like say the same, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I mean if you say Lunela, I mean technically it's right in terms of if you just look at it. But like think of it as an actual name. <laughs> I mean and, and you could say, well, oh well it's all based on fiction anyway. It's like, yes. But Think of how uncomfortable Lunala is to say. <laughs> it, to it sounds borderline really bad. <laughs> yeah. But, no. um... <laughs> how do you say, um... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so I think it's Sogalia, right? Because, like, yeah, but I, it's yes. Solgaleo, isn't it? Yeah, Solgaleo. Mm. Or oh, I hit... Soul Galio. <laughs> I saw someone like do a pronunciation breakdown of how they said Pokemon names, and that's how they uh, pronounce it. Soul Galio. Mm. Um, another one is uh the difference between Cofagrigus and Cofagrigus. Yeah. Uh, I pretend to try and steer towards Cofagrigus because it kind of takes emphasis off of the thing off that of they that ban his name word. for. Yep. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I just find it funny that if you try and nickname your cof your Cofagrigus Cofagrigus, it says you can't do it because it's got the word in it. Wait, really? Just find... <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> if you go into Pokemon White or Black. I think it's in Black Two as well. It it just doesn't let you do it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh man. Um, and the biggest, uh, the other big one for me, um, is a Aegis slash. Uh, oh, yeah. Aegis Slash. Aegis and Slash. Aegis Slash. I say Aegis Slash because I'm pretty sure you say Aegis. You because the A is silent. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. It is. It, I'm pretty sure it's a Greek word, right? Like saying e, like an Aegis. Aegis. Or an, a, an Aegis. Yeah. It, it's like a, it's like a form of shield, or it just means shield. But like, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it's e, like Aegis. Because I've heard, like, I've heard it, sit, like, pronounce Aegis more than, like, a, a, like Aegis. Uh, Aegis, the protection, backing, or support of a particular person or organization. That doesn't Does sound it right. Pronounce as Aegis? Um. Because it would Aegis. tell you if it's, like, Yes, the, Aegis. Um... That's how it's pronounced. Oh, okay, there you go. So it is Aegis slash. So there you go. I mean, or they could, okay. But. Pokemon has been known to pronounce things however they want. want. Yeah, because like the Rayquaza and Rayquaza. Rayqu isn't it? Okay, how do you pronounce it? Rayquaza. Yeah, Rayquaza. 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 <laughs> it's American. Yeah. Rayquaza? But like, yeah. Um, <laughs> Rayquaza. Um, well, that sounds a lot cooler. It... Yeah, there's something nasally and kind of more nerdy about Rayquaza. <laughs> Rayquaza. <laughs> yeah. When you say Rayquaza, it, yeah. it's um, it's it sounds more close to Quasar, which is cool because Quasars are sick. Yeah, because that's where it lives up in the uh, ozone oh, layer the near, near the spacey space. Basically, space. Yeah. Um. Deoxys versus Deoxys. Have you have you heard people? Say I Deoxys? I have people say Deoxys. I'm like, huh? I I get where they're coming from. I can't really blame them. 
because you the Y can be either Deoxys or E's. E's. Yeah. But but generally, if it's an I E, it would be E. Like, or, sorry, or, sorry, if it was an E or an I, it would probably be Deoxys, but it's Deoxys. It's like system. You're just taking the X sound and doing it that way. <laughs> I've but, heard um, uh, people pronounce uh, Pidgeot and Pidgets. Oh, yeah. Again, both aren't technically wrong, wrong in terms of the actual, like, seeing it and going, that's how you say it, but Pidgeot is the, the way yeah. you say it. But, um, oh, God, what was another one? Victory Bell and Victory Bell. Victory Bell, Bell yeah. It's Victory Bell. <laughs> if you say Victory Bell, it's like, I mean, again, it is an annoying, that name, to be honest. It's not actually annoying to say or anything, but it's yeah. just, I can kind of get why people would shorten it to Victory Bell. Victory Bell. Victory Bell. It's like Victory Torkoal Bell. Torkoal. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, Torkoal and Torkoal. I never heard anyone pronounce it as what Tor say, Torkoal. Torkoal. Like Snorkel. Well, well, some people just kind of blend the O A L sound into one thing. Which again, it's just it's just a language thing. Yeah. Like <laughs> some people just join things to make it easier. Yeah. I think it's like the same with people pronouncing like Charizard as Charizard. Oh. Like you just <laughs> Skip the eye completely. There's a lot of. There's Samurot and Samurot, but it's Samurot. Yeah. As much as... Like, there's a lot of things that, like, get mispronounced, but, like. Um. <laughs> oh, God. There was one. Like... <sighs> there, there are a couple that, like, kind of are pretty vague. Like, um. Not this, not. <laughs> I was gonna say Vespiquen, but no, because I, I haven't heard anyone mispronounce it. But uh, I used to call it Vespi Queen, but I didn't realize it was like down one oh, e. Yeah, 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 one down one e. But obviously, I was like, like ten. Um, no. <laughs> I feel like people when they first see Dark Ray's name say Dark Ray. Dark Ray, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By accident, like even if it's just. <laughs> Dark Ray was sent Dark out. Ray. <laughs> but um yeah I oh mean, Rai uh is very Japanese. Fampy. people pronounce it as fanfi sometimes oh yeah well again i can't really blame for that it's a pretty forgettable pokemon to begin with uh. um <laughs> oh raiko was a good one oh isn't it raiku raiko raiku or oh, raiko because it's OU, but like, I still feel like Raikou sounds better. There, there are some things that I'm just gonna be like, nah, I prefer to pronounce them so, like certain ways because they sound better. Yeah. Because I used to pronounce Aegis slash Agus slash, not even close. Oh. But like, it just, it just kind of had a good energy to it though, like Agus slash. Agus slash. Aegis slash. But yeah, um. Dub blade and do blade. <laughs> do blade. Do blade. Do blade. Say double. <laughs> now say dub blade. <laughs> <laughs> do blade. <laughs> no, say double. Say blade. Now say dub blade. Do blade. blade. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. There are so many though that you could really like. Yeah, I'm just like looking through like lists of Pokemon that I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that people can mispronounce it. Oh, Chimeco. Oh, yeah, and uh, Chimeco. Uh, I just remember when uh, Travis openly called it Chimcho or, or something like that. I remember that too, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh! <laughs> it's got an E. Say, um, Chubku instead of Chubku. Yeah, I I was really surprised that people did that. Mm. Um. Oh yeah, for Salamence, Salamence, people call it Sal Salamance. Salamance. Yeah. Because people didn't, didn't see there people was no A. A and E R. Salamence. 
Um, Bagon being Bagon. Bagon, yep. Oh, um, Metagross, Metagross. Actually, is it Bagon? It's Hold Bagon, on. yeah. Because, yeah, no. I don't know, I don't think, for Bagon, Bagon, like, eh, it doesn't really bother me that much. It's not the same. Hmm? That's what it sounds like, right? In the uh, anime? Probably. <laughs> uh, It'd be really funny if it did sound like that. Uh, oh, uh, Regice Ice or Regice? Ice? It's, okay, it's Regice. Ice. Yep. I know it's Regice. Ice. But Reggie Ice just makes more canonical sense because of everything. You know, other everything other is Reggie. Reggie Ice wouldn't have been, like, the worst thing to call it anyway, but. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Reuniclus. Like, a lot of people would fuck that up, probably. Like, just even looking at it. Like, they'd be like Reuniclus or. Reuniun. Re yeah, like they just be. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think I mispronounced that when I first saw it. Oh, oh yeah. Media? And then that's the same with like mischievous, mischievous. Yeah. But that's pronunciation. Mischievous. I feel like, even though mischievous, I wait. Is mischievous mischievous is the correct pronunciation, right? Mischievous, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the correct one. Because it's supposed to sound like mischievous. That because that's the same like syllable structure and like yeah. how it flows properly. Mischievous, mischievous. But um, yeah, I I I totally get why people come up with mischievous though. What else do we have? Groudon and Groudon. I I heard someone call it Ground Don. <laughs> That's probably just purely misspeaking by accident, but like genuinely, people have called it Groudon in front of me, and I'm like, you're an idiot. Yep. Oh, Groudon. uh, Yuxi or Uxi? I say Yuxi. I say Yuxi. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Azelf, I mean, that's probably just accent at the end of the day, like, um, yeah. linguistic diff, like, Azelf and Azelf, like, it's just European to, um, American. American yeah. Um, like, Kyogre and Kyogre? Nah, Kyogre. That's, <laughs> that's official. They did it in the Gen 3 Pokey rap. It's so, oh. uh, the legendaries uh, for that are Grudon and Kyogre. Um, what's another one? Haxorus and Haxorus. It's a, like as much as like that's close, it's still a different yeah thing. <laughs> Ax Axu and Axu. A lot of people put like that kind of weird, like X U, like like after the X to kind of emphasize the S. Yeah. Which yeah. Uh, Axu. I mean, it's technically not wrong, but. X U X U. X your question. Uh, Cobalion or Cobalion? Isn't it Cobalion? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cobalion. I choose you. Terrakion. Verizion. I feel like I've heard Kelido before. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Oh, probably unintentional, but still. Um, <laughs> Giratina versus Giratina. 
I've heard that before. It... Catch Giratina. It's like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and do you know how to speak English? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you can have a G sound, like a J. Yeah. But it's generally a J that's like... Especially when it's followed by I, it's probably not a J sound, unless it's J. God, learn your, learn your, <laughs> your lessons on English. It's like G before E, not before I, or something. I don't remember. I never really paid what? attention to that school. Well, I mean, it's not like you can't put G before I, but the point is, is like, it doesn't sound like a J when it's in front of an I. It's or a an, Or an A. Uh... Or even a U, I think. The only letter that it can really work with is uh, an E. Or at least normally, I don't know. It's a little complicated. I know Jin is uh, G-I-N, so kind of fucks with that. Whatever. Mm, English. Yeah. I failed English for a reason. Uh... <laughs> I failed English by choice. Uh, Lugia versus Lugia. I've never heard anyone say Lugia. I, I have heard people say Lugia. <laughs> it is weird. What's next, Luigi? <laughs> a, a Luigi board? <laughs> Can you burn a Luigi, Luigi board? board? <laughs> uh, Dialga and Dialga? Uh, Dialga. Yeah, Although Dialga does sound more cinematic. It would make sense because a dial for a clock, oh, but no. Maybe. But no, apparently that's not the pronunciation. I mean, in the anime, they alternate between Dialga and Dialga, though. So yeah, I know. Maybe they, they don't even know. I've heard Palkaya before. I, I heard someone mispronounce Manaphy really, really badly. But that was because we were kids. It, we, uh, it will pronounce it as man fanny. <laughs> yeah. Mantine or mantine? I think it's supposed to be pronounced mantine. I think, but the spelling is really, like, really. It's supposed to be manta ray and marine. Well, if you see manaphy and mantine, it makes sense, I guess. But, like,. Wait, I said Manaphy. No, wait, what's the fucking pre <laughs> of Mantike. Man oh, oh no. Mantike. Then Mantine would make sense then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mantike, I used to pronounce it Mantiki. Mantiki. Oh, when that... I was a kid. Go Mantiki. Mantiki. I don't know. In my head it made sense. I like that one. Um, oh god. There are, there are, like, I need to go to, like, other gens. <laughs> Malmar and Malamar? I've never heard anyone mispronounce Malamar. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, Kl Kl <laughs> Klowitza and Kloritza? So, for some reason, like, it, I, it's again, it's like a shortening thing, but it just sounds so much yeah, worse. Yeah, you're just skipping. Like, oh, because it's supposed to be, like, how witzer, and, like, the W is supposed to be, like, the biggest, like, emphasis in the entire yeah. word. And you, you're like, Klowitzer. It's like, what? Huh? Like, no, it's Klowitzer. Wit. 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 Well, the they way, can't pronounce favorite, that they're not wits at all. One of my favorite water types, like, ever. Chloe, yeah, that was my that was like my favorite water type in Gen uh six. The cryo is really cool, uh, and also like the animals based off the pistol shrimp was cool. Facts and stuff. But um <laughs> 
I feel like... Actually, no, I feel like people got the pronunciations of the Totem Pokemon pretty on point when they first came out. Um, Necrozma and Necrozma is just like a dialect thing. Yeah. Um, Stock Attacker and Stack Attacker, that's the same thing. It's the same thing with Jirachi and Jirachi as well. Yeah. But it is Jirachi, so shut the fuck up. Jirachi. Jirachi, my favorite wish Pokemon. See, if we had the American man here, we'd be able to... Or Canada... Whatever. Uh, uh, Wherever. Uh, he, he has... He speaks the American English. Right, okay. <laughs> Make it a lot easier to figure out if this is a dialect thing or if... You know. Yeah. Or if it's just commonly... No. Is uh, it that bad? Corsola or Corsola? Uh, Corsola. Yeah, I think it is Corsola. I feel like it'd be Corsola if it was double L. Is it double... Wait. Am I fucking this up? There's so many things that I can't really remember. Hmm. <laughs> onyx and onyx. <laughs> yeah, because they think of the color. Yeah. <laughs> it is onyx, but... Well, no, onyx is the same as the color. Like, it's the same pronunciation, but... I don't know why... I don't know. It's a weird thing. <clears throat> I don't really have a lot of stories that I can remember of people, like... I guess mispronouncing things though. Like like the thing is I can think of a lot of things that I've heard, but I can't really remember any context or anything. Oh, another one is Braviary versus Braviary. It's Braviary, by the way. Yeah. Wavy the Braviest. America. Bravi. The American Pokemon. Yeah. It was really funny. Uh, the person who designed that Pokemon was like, how can I make this the most American Pokemon as possible? <laughs> make it a literal <laughs> screaming eagle. Make it the uh, American flag. <laughs> but bird. But a bird instead. Um, hmm. I feel like... People would just sh uh, shorten tentacle to tentacle. Yep. Because I've heard that easier. before. Um, I heard someone pronounce the Nido family really weird. Like Nido? Like Nido, Nido yeah. They call it Nido. Yeah, Nido no, Ran. Nido King. Nido Queen. Nido Ran. Nido Arena. Um, Frostless and Frostlass. Frost. Yeah, that's just being lazy. That's just being lazy. <laughs> Snow runt and Snow runt. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, if you don't think it's Snow runt, then you clearly don't know it's typing. Oh yes, uh, Snow runt, the sleepy Pokemon. Yeah. I mean, for a while I thought it was Snow Run. But then thinking about it, I went, oh no, it makes sense that it's Snow Run. But. Um. Swinub and Swinub. And Pilo Swine and Pillow Swine. Pilo Swine, yeah. It is Pilo Swine. Yeah. As much as it is a little annoying to say it like that. Yeah, I got it from the I um, used to call anime. It Pillow Swine. I used to call it Pillow Swine. Because. It was just, it just seemed a bit easier to say. Yeah. But like, Pilo Swine is how you say it. There are a lot of, but like, um. Fionn and Fione. Yes. Uh, I say Fion. I. I'm kind of conflicted because Fion kind of works. It, well, it doesn't even kind of work. It 
pretty much does, but Fiona also works because the E could be like the axe entity if they wanted it to be. Oh, yeah. To be fair, though, it's not, so it probably is just Fion. But, um... I was just thinking Fioni because, like, Manaphy is also three syllables. So, like, they try and keep them oh, that yeah. way. Like, keep them the same kind of syllables. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I used to pronounce Kamo O as Kamo. <laughs> <laughs> Kamo. Like, no, not Kamo, but just Kamo. <laughs> I, I, I want someone to have pronounced it at that one point. Kamu. Surely someone has. <laughs> Probably. Like, like some kid somewhere. Oh yeah, some people say um, septile instead of skeptile. Okay. Because people skip um, the C. I, I, yeah, well, to be fair, in English you can say septile and it still makes sense. Yeah. It's like when you say schedule. Right. Because, and yeah. it's not schedule, by the way, it is schedule. It's annoying, but it's true. And I hate that it's true. But it's how it is. So, like, the C can just be included in the S sound, but it's... Septile, yeah, like... But generally, like, a C in something is used after an S if it's followed by something like an H to, like, give it a sh... <laughs> like yeah. a sh noise but like with skeptile it's skeptile because it's just skeptile um superior and superior <laughs> yeah uh i said superior yeah it's oh well it's superior but but yeah superior because or or maybe or so but um, uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, Tangela and Tangela. Oh, what the? Okay, no, really? I've heard someone say Tangela before. But it's literally a tangle of vines. <laughs> Well, their Tang introduction was uh, Pokemon Go, and they oh, didn't pronounce oh. Pokemon for you. Oh. You have to learn to read. <laughs> Remember Pokemon Go? Whatever happened to that game? <laughs> Tinamo and Tynamo? Pretty sure it's Tynamo. Tynamo, yeah. Like, tiny. Um, But yeah, no, I think that's really... I don't know. I can't... Nothing. Really think... Oh yeah. Uh... And one yard. Yeah. Like <laughs> the the pre evo of Bishop or whatever. Pornyard. I've heard before. Yeah, I think it's Pornyard. <clears throat> I think it can be Pornyard probably as well, but. <clears throat> uh, Muna and Mana. Ha! Huh. I mean, it's Muna. Yeah. Obviously. Moon. But... Yeah. But, um... There are a lot of words... There are a lot of names in Pokemon where it's like... This, the, the writing tells a different story to what it, the actual pronunciation is. Sometimes it's correct and sometimes <laughs> it's not. Like with Muna, technically it is Mana because it's oh, double yeah. N, but like they pronounce it Muna for some reason. Yeah, it's the way that they. It's the way they make fictional make it, yeah. names sound fictional because it's like, oh well, it's not pronounced how you pronounce it normally. <laughs> yeah. You, you <laughs> can't. You can't just call Pikachu Pikachu. Also, Pike is apparently an eating disorder. It's an eating disorder, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John Tron, for telling yeah, me that Yep, one. that's exactly what I got as well. I learned from John Tron. Oh, yeah. I mean, where else would you learn it? Google? Yeah. Uh, 
I want to look, know what a Pikachu is. Oh, it's an eating disorder Pokemon. Oh, yeah, uh, people pronouncing Zacian really weird. So, I hear Zacian, I heard Zacian once. Uh, and then, like, Zacian or Zacian, which Zay that is Zay it. Zacian is dialect difference. Pretty sure. Because Zacian, Zacian, it's just the A. It's really the different yeah. thing. But, like, um,. Yeah, Zakian's an interesting one. Yep. Don't need to guess Eternatus. who pronounced it that way. Yeah, Etern Eternatus. It's Eternatus, though. I just like sure. saying it that way because it's American. <laughs> it's be American. Oh, it's trying to make a mess of my um uh accent. Mm. Just to piss people off. I do it a lot. <laughs> But yeah, it's, yeah the, I was watching like American stuff for a year. It changed my accent. And I decided <laughs> to listen to British stuff, and that changed my accent. Nice. And now I'm listening to nothing, and that's changed my accent. Not really. Yeah, but, um. Jim, I, I don't know. There's, there's not many more that I can think of, but like. What even is this segment? <laughs> uh, just uh, mispronouncing Pokemon. Bruh. I just thought that would have been interesting if, the, and you know, if we had a third person here. Yeah, I was about to thanks, third person, it <laughs> thanks, you know, cool. Yeah. Thank, thanks for joining the podcast, you bastard. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, gave you plenty of time, and you never responded. How dare you? <laughs> You're gonna blame it on something weird, I bet. Yeah. But yeah. Uh. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else I can really. Something I can uh. really like put out. Uh... Yeah, I don't think there's. Oh, Milotic and Milotic. Oh. See, I like saying Militic, but I know it's Milotic. Because Militic just has a nice flow to it. It's like Militic. Oh, have you ever heard anyone mispronounce Gengar as Gengar? No. No, I haven't. Uh, I was like, all right, that's that's something that ghastly happened. Ghastly or ghastly though? Uh, ghastly. Yeah, it's ghastly. Because there's no H. There's no H. As much, I, although what's annoying again is that both names would make perfect with, sense even yeah. with the lack of the H. It still makes sense. <clears throat> ghastly, like. It just all works, yeah. and yet it annoyingly doesn't. Uh, Aaron or Aaron? Aaron. Yep. <laughs> I heard Aaron. someone say Aaron before. I'm like, huh? Mm. Yeah, you know Aaron, the thing that evolves to Agron. I I, I try to purposely try and mispronounce Agron, but that doesn't work. Aaron. Agron. Agron. My favorite Pokemon is Agron. What is that? Layron or Laron. Uh, I say Laron. Yeah, like Laron. Uh, it's supposed to be a derivative of Lair, though. Yeah. Supposed to, uh... Yeah. Alright. <laughs> I think I'm actually done now. With... Uh... Yeah, no, this, things. That was a... That was an interesting segment. Yeah. Um, it, it just got really messy. It just got really like, what do we do? <laughs> We're just like looking half the time and then, yeah. Hey, well, you know, maybe if there was a third person here. If we had a third person. If only we had a third person. If only. If, if only that were possible. I don't think it is. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe next podcast we'll have more. Next time. We'll actually have three. Or four, for if that ever happens. I don't think so. Hey, well, we'll see. We'll see when the time comes. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for listening to the podcast. You probably weren't watching it because it's just a screen that says Untitled Pokemon Podcast. 
yeah uh thank you uh whaleborn for joining me in this uh lovely uh afternoon yeah, no problem man it was good good fun good uh good talks were had yeah absolutely and yeah um it's uh yeah that's it catch you next time see ya bye